Hi, I'm Professor Jeffrey Wasatsky, and next to me is David Diaz. Um, this is our MEDP 36 guest lecture. So for the next 20 minutes, uh, David Diaz is going to tell you what he's been doing since he graduated from the program. Little setup here. When David was in your seat, he wanted to be a cinematographer, he wanted to be an editor, he wanted to be a producer, he wanted to be a director. But where he is now, that whole expression, it's not where you start, it's where you finish. Now he's in Local 600, the um, Cinematographers Union, mm -hmm. and he is, what is your position? You are a... Right now I am a loader and I'm slowly, slowly moving up to becoming a second AC. Second AC. So he's going to tell you about his journey. Uh, we're going to try to do a little Q&A, like 10 minutes, and 10 minutes discussion. So, David, I'm going to hit you with the first question. Okay. Uh, when you were a student here, you had a tremendous camaraderie. You had a big class. Mm -hmm. This was before the uh, pandemic. The classes oh were 18, yeah. 20 students. Yeah. Um, could you talk a little bit about the camaraderie and the collaboration that happened during your thesis film class? Well, during the time, I think we were forced to share, to what, three AVIDs? We had three working Very AVIDs. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. we had to, like... We had to force each other, not force, but we had to get along with each other. You had to book editing time. You had to figure out your crew. We usually crewed up with each other. Um, I ended up helping a lot of the students shoot their films because I really did want to be behind the camera, but at the same time direct. But in being behind the camera, I feel like that's where I got the most practice of, you know, learning your angles and learning your, you know, your exposure and your framing and things of that nature. And you were shooting a Super 8 film too? For yeah, we were shooting Super 8 films. Everything is like, you know, my, you know, four by four, you know, super restricted, you know. And I mean, I think I was probably the only, like, one of the students that just loved shooting on you film love here. Film. Everyone you else went digital film. by then, yeah. um, which was more film stock for me. So I didn't care if people wanted to shoot digital. Um, and that's basically it. From, like just crew, crewing with each that's other important. is very important because I mean you could be in a bind and like you're you're trying to work on this edit and it's not working and then someone next to you go you you actually say hey can you take a look at this and he's like hey why don't you or she hey try this or why don't you try this and that ends up just working sometimes or in them giving you advice you figure something else out that works you know and that's what happens sometimes on set when. Uh, uh, the DP is trying to figure out a shot, and then the, and the director is mostly responsible for the performance of the actor, and the actor is not probably hitting the mark right. And then the DP will say, "Well, let's move the camera maybe this way," and that all. Sometimes that does end up happening, um, but crewing with each other is definitely important because I think that's how you you work off each other and you learn more, you know. And of course, yes, it's, there's it's competition, of course, but like in in a good way, but. I feel the more you collaborate, the more you work with people, the better your work and their work gets. You know, um, I always have guys saying, hey, Dave, I'm shooting this. Can you take a look at it? You know, and I take a look at it and I give them my advice or if they even want my advice. You know, sometimes it's just like, hey, thumbs up or thumbs down or what will you change or, you know, things like that. I have to tell you, um, you know, David is being very modest about the editing room and sharing with each other and not worrying about you know, helping someone to a point where they end up getting first prize in a film festival, you end up getting fourth. He, he's, he's a very giving person. And when he was editing here, he didn't have the luxury to edit at home. You had to edit here. Mm -hmm. I remember many times we would do coffee runs to land and see it mm -hmm. at two in the morning. I mean, and we, I miss that in a way. I mean, I, I don't miss it in terms of the long hours, but I miss it in terms of the camaraderie and you guys being together in a room in the, you know, pre-summer, like Pepper early June. Pizza. Yeah, eating pizza all day long with Dr. Peppers. But I do want to share with you, um, fast forward years later, David went on to get his, his um, bachelor's degree at uh, Hunter College. Yeah. I and you know, and um, I want you to talk a little bit about how you guys keep together. I mean, you know, we went to visit um, um, Zanin and Ryan at their pr production house where they work, how you guys keep together to help each other get into the union. Could you talk a little bit about how that relationship continued after film school and how you all kept in touch? So Zanin, I met Zanin when we were- Zanin Lindsay. Yeah. Um, when I was working here, I was, I was running the AV department, um, still figuring out how to get into the union. And that's you know, a whole nother process. But in meeting Zanin here, I hired him to work in AV. And then from there, we ended crazy up- Crazy hours and crazy shoots also on your yeah. other projects. And then from there, we were like, hey, I'm shooting this film this weekend. Do you want to come help out? He was like, sure, I'll come help out. And then he's going to be like, hey, Dave, I'm shooting something. Do you want to come help? I was like, sure, I'll come help out. You so had him living in the woods for like three days, right? <laughs> yeah, so after I got into the union um, during COVID, 
uh, I made good friends with another, uh, you know, he's an operator, Jorge Del Toro. And he was like, hey, Dave, I'm, I'm, I'm writing this film. Do you want to come work on it? And I go, sure, man. I mean, it's COVID. No one's doing anything. Why not? Let's shoot something. He's like, we're going to be in the woods. I'm like, all right, let's do it. I don't care. Let's, I don't care where we're shooting. Let's just shoot. Then he's like, yeah, we need to get a crew, though, but minimal crew, because Jorge likes working with a small crew. I was like, look, let's just get one more guy to help us out, move stuff around. And it ended up being Zanin. And Zanin ended up, we, uh, you know, I, I built this makeshift dolly. I wish I had a photo of it. And I've been using it for like 15 years. And he ended up being the dolly grip and helping with the sound and adjusting these tiny lights we would put in trees. And, and I, I, I was uh, the focus puller on that particular project. So another thing that you don't know about the union is that there's different levels. Like, don't think once you get into the union, you're going to be a cinematographer and you're going to be behind the camera right away. It's not going to happen that way. Um, you start off as a loader. A loader is responsible for setting up villages and doing uh, download, media download, unless for some reason the DIT does it. But ha most of the time, it's going to be the loader doing the downloading and setting up villages on set, making sure the signal's always up in villages and focus monitors. Then you have your second AC that kind of runs the show, per se, and helps out. Um, they do the slate. That's how you guys know it as the person that does the slate. But they do more than just slate. They put um, the orders together for like what lenses they're going to use that week. Uh, they're in charge of payroll for the crew as well, uh, for the department. Then you go to the first AC. First AC starts off as, of course, the focus puller. But he or she is responsible for building the camera, putting the camera together. Everything on that camera, that first AC, yes to no, front to back, every single function on that camera, first AC responsibility, uh, and also the focus puller and runs the department. Then you have your operator. Operator is always in, in working with the cinematographer or the DP. And the DP is like, hey, all right, boom, down, go left, right, up, down, no, go in tighter, you know, slower, uh, slower down on the jib, faster on the jib. And that's what the operators just with the DP all the time figuring out what to do with that stuff. And then the DP responsible for lighting, telling where, to, where the department to put cameras and lights as well. And I just want to share this with you. David texts me all the time. Uh, he knows the, my favorite film is The Godfather. You're on a set with uh, Robert Duval, And he sends me a picture with my, one of my iconic actors. And, you know, the, the idea that when you leave here, you should keep in touch with your professors. Um, because I have to tell you, I always use David as an example. I think I've helped you get well, many no, of Jeff, your jobs. No, no, Jeff's the reason. Um, Jeff's the reason I've had I've had every single job in my life. When I I was working at a clothing store and I got fired, um, and then I say, Hey, Jeff, I got some free time. Do you have any internships that I can start from the ground floor and work my way up? I don't care what it is, just anything right now. I'll be collecting unemployment. I think you started at Jacoby Hospital. At one no, that was, that was my internship. Internship, right. No, that was In my the medical, he was shooting heart operations, <laughs> and he hates blood. Yeah. So, um, But you went on, I know, Hispanic Information So Network. I went to HIT, and I interned with them, and then they figured out, oh, he knows how to edit. Let's give him a segment a week. So I edited the one segment a week, and then it got to the point where I was like, hey, guys, I'm getting $10 a day for just travel. You guys need to hire me, and they finally gave me a job. I was it like, it was a great gig, yeah. Ten bucks or twelve bucks an hour was super, but it was well. Look, it I'm was gonna, working in TV. Yeah, and I want to interrupt them because this is really important. You know, as I always tell you to come to these screenings and events that we go to. David came to a screening. Um, he had a film in the sidebar at the Cannes Film Festival, and that's where we, when you met Quinnell and everyone. Yeah. So all of a sudden, these meetings came to being networking events that got him to his career. Could you talk a little bit about, because a lot of our students, they don't network, they don't go to events, and if you could tell them how that all panned out for you, that would be great. Well, from going, because I, um, I got a film into the, the Cannes Film Festival, and I didn't have any money to go. And, and then Jeff is like, hey, come down, there's this screening for... I forgot the film. Men really in Black. Men in Black. Very good. Black. Yeah. I can't believe I remember. It was, it was for Men in Black. It was a cinematographer screening. And the cinematographer was there and talking about the film and everything, which is really cool. Then after the Q&A, uh, Jeff introduced me to Quinnell Jones. And then he's like, hey, you know, you know how Jeff and is. Like, hey, this is Dave. You know, he got a film in the festival, blah, blah, blah. And then, and then he's like, oh, so when you're going, I'm like, I'm not going. I don't got the money for it. And he pulls me aside and chews me out for 45 minutes. This guy that I've never met in my life. And he From the, pretty much, the EDU cameraman. He yeah. pretty much convinced me to, to start a GoFundMe raise the money, and go to France to the Cannes right. Film Festival. Yep, and, which you did. And then from there, I realized, you know what? I want to be behind the camera. I don't want to direct anymore. 
I like writing projects, but I just, I want to be behind the camera. I love the concept of just, you know, painting with light inside this, you know, whatever frame size you, you want to use. And then that's when I contacted Cornell and Cornell's like, email this guy, get on the wait list for the exam, take the exam, pass the exam, pay your, pay your dues and start working. And, and tell, the students, later, tell the students some of the projects you've worked on since you've graduated. Just not all of them, but uh, half a dozen of them. Oh, from like union jobs. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, the really cool one that it's my personal favorite was Transformers. Uh, I got to work on the New York unit. And the best part about it was that it was just the car. So it was like all the stuff at night that you saw in New York City. Like, you know, but the, the only thing was that it was all overnight. So it's like 5 p.m. call time. You wrap by 5 a.m. You get in bed by 7 a.m. And you're lucky to see your kid awake by the time you get home. But, you know, I grew up in the 80s and Transformers was like my favorite thing growing up as a kid. So to work on that, and it was just the cars. We had no actors, no nothing. Just all the cars, all the stunt cars. I have so many photos of the cars. Inside the cars I'm not supposed to take. And that was really cool. Um, and then the Robert Duvall movie that I got to, not work only with Robert Duvall, but Adam Sandler. Because it was the movie Hustle and I got to work on that for two weeks. Oh, how about yeah. the, t the TV shows, the, uh, the Brooklyn uh, Cop show? Yeah. The, uh, unfortunately, it got canceled. I worked. I was the main loader on uh, East New York. But that was for a year. Right? One it was an eight-month show. Eight yeah, yeah. eight-month show. So it was eight months of grinding, grinding, grinding for. Anyone eight ever watch that show? East New York. Yeah. It was. A, it was a cop show East called New East New York on CBS. Yeah, it, was it only did one season. Yeah. Um, the Good, Good Fight. fight. I did yeah. the final season of The Good Fight. That was great. Um, I got to work on the Jim Jarmusch movie. That's right. Which is phenomenal. And and Ingvar worked on the Jim Jarmusch movie. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Uh, that's great. And these guys, these are like legendary filmmakers. Now the downside. And oh, you, you, need, you need to hear this because a lot of you think that when you get into these union positions at entry level positions, it's full time work like hmm. working for a network. It's not. And I want David to share oh, with you some of the things that yeah, happen I'm after the strike. You guys the short, yeah. well, well, we got time. Oh, no, we got, we time. got a little time because we want to show you okay. film too. So, uh, second, so I already talked about the first job Jeff got me. The second job Jeff got me was the job here at BCC. Again, um, I leave HITN for personal reasons, and I tell Jeff, hey, Jeff, I got some free time. Anything pop up that, that's work-wise, I'll take it. Two or three days later, I think he calls. He's like, look, the guy is leaving from, that runs the AV department. It's run by someone you know. Go talk to them. And I think Gets a week later, I get the job, and then three months later, I get full-time. Three jobs. <laughs> Fast forward 12 years later, I finally figured out how to get into the union. Um, I'm day playing, day playing, um, I'll go into day Tell playing, day, yeah. I'll go into day playing later so I can finish the story. Um, I'm day playing while working here and Frank is great enough to let me take certain days off to go work on. The first show I worked on was Billions. That was the first show I ever got to work on uh, for, for one day, but which was great because um, I was actually a fan of the show. Still am a fan of the show. Um, then I finally get called for a full-time gig called Harlem. I put in my two weeks. I worked for three weeks on the show, and then COVID hits. 10 months of no work, 10 months of sitting on my ass. But the only upside was that I got to be 10 months um, with, your kid. with my kid. With my your kid, daughter, my yeah. kid was five years old. She was doing homeschooling. So we did a lot of fun activities. My wife was able to do uh, at home work and then two days a week in the office. So I got to see how desolate the city really was. Um, and then come back to the strike, the actors, the no, well, well, come. Uh, then you know, we come back ten months later. I'm working on project after project, project after project. I think I had eighteen months of straight work, which is unheard of in the union because a lot of people, a lot of people um, sometimes don't even get three months of work or two months of work because sometimes they just don't make the right connections, they don't do the right networking, they don't talk to the right people. See what I'm trying to get at with the, the networking and talking to people and making friends yeah, and stuff like that. Yep. So then the strike, I, I work for 18 months straight. I, we wrap on a movie. I get one last day in July, in June, and then it's seven months of nothing, just crickets. And I've heard horror stories of people losing their apartments, people losing their homes. Unfortunately, people not with us anymore because of this. So it's... Ups and downs. There's ups and downs, but when it's up and you're, and even as you're, and you're like, oh man, I gotta start as a loader, 
But when you see what a loader gets paid in the union at a starting rate, you go, I will load all fucking day. I don't care. I don't care. I'll do it all day. And overtime, yeah. Oh, then overtime kicks in, you know. But you work long hours. Don't think it's a nine to five. Don't think, yeah, I'm going to do. I mean, there, unless there's like, for example, some shows now or, or movies now I'm seeing that they're calling French hours, that they do 10 hours straight, no, no, no lunch, but just 10 hours. That's it. You do your 10 hours, in and out, boom. But they feed you, of course, and you, you, know, you take a few minutes to eat something. Um, but you're, like a network show, you'll be there minimum 12 hours. And now it's like a 14-hour cutoff hard because after 14 hours, then they got mm. not just wasted, but you, got, you start going into, you got to start, uh, production's going to have to start covering for hotels. You have some people that live too far. Um, if, it becomes expensive. Huh? Then if you do go over, then at the, the next day when you're starting rate, you're not starting at your regular rate. You're starting at like your super like triple OT rate um, because I think it's called prevailing. Or something. I'm not too familiar with the terms, so don't quote me on them. But there's certain things that like, and then that costs production money. So 14 hours, you know, 12 to 14 hours is like what you're going to be on. I want to close this because we only have five more minutes. Um, about the importance of networking and being from the Bronx. I make sure that when everyone leaves here, if you haven't gotten your BCC uh, Film Club shirt, make sure you see me. Everyone usually gets one either working on commencement or an event. But I always tell our students to wear something from the Bronx on the set, and this is a perfect example. I think that's how you met Carlos. Someone was working on it as no, Greens. No, it was, a, that no, was, it was um, another kid. It was another was kid name? I met. I don't know. Uh, it Sylvester, was on uh, not Sylvester. He was a PA. Uh, Sebastian. Wearing the BCC, he sees him at lunch hour, picks him out, Bronx community, yeah. Yes, on the photo. Move them up the ladder. So whether you know the person there or not, this is a perfect example. When David is one and, of the premier ambassadors for the program. And now we're two because now we got Zane in it. He got another student, so, a former film club president. And, and, the, the and, our, and he's helping. We have more students get he, in. He, and this is what you need to bring, this spree de corps to the program. This is why Bronx community is looked at in such a special way. Everyone helps each other. And I think that's just because of our culture where we come from. Because you go to other film schools, everyone is m me, myself, and I. And here, everyone helps each other. So with that, okay. we want to show David's yeah, film. Okay. David, set it up. Um, all right. So by the way, by the way, he writes. He has screenplays. He knows actors. You know, he's living the 24-7. It's not just you know, being in the union in Local 600. So this is a perfect example of what you're going to show. So really quick. So this film has been on my mind for like maybe 10 years. Um, uh, my, my buddy sent me this, these clippings from Tumblr. and Not what you think. And um, it was these screenshot. Not screen. It was these drawings of this guy in this gas mask walking around looking for food. And then it inspired me. I was like, oh, man, it would be really cool to shoot something like this. So I said, I don't want to shoot it unless I find the exact location of where I want to shoot it. And then for six months, there's this abandoned liquor store around the corner from my house, and I never got the urge to even, like, go to the owner until something. I looked at it, and I go, why the after I never asked about this place? And I walked in, and then five minutes later, the guy was like, yeah, whenever you want to shoot, just let me know, and that was it. So it's a, it's a short. There's, it's two minutes, 37 Let's seconds. It. Let's play it. And, and check it out. you know, it's, it's something that you could develop into a feature. Um, and the idea that he keeps his art alive, I'll never forget, uh, I don't know if it was a year ago, David sent me a picture of a Super 8 camera you had to load for a scene in a movie. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's and he pinball. was the only one on the set that knew how to load it yeah. because he has such a love for camera. And it's very easy. It's like someone who's a mechanic can look at a car and can tell you right away what's wrong with it. Um, some people have that personality. David has it. Okay, here we go. Yeah. Yeah, it's a short. It's a short piece. Uh, let's just raise the audio. The people of the United States and our friends and allies will not live at the mercy of an outlaw regime that threatens the peace with weapons of mass murder. We will meet that threat now with our Army, Air Force, Navy, Coast Guard, and Marines, so that we do not have to meet it later with armies of firefighters and police and doctors on the streets of our cities.
I have full confidence in your courage, devotion to duty, and skill in battle. We will accept nothing less than full victory. We fight because we must fight if we are to live in a world where every country can shape its own destiny. And only in such a world will our own freedom be finally secure. This kind of a world will never be built by bombs or bullets. Our troops are out of Iraq. Our troops are coming home from Afghanistan. And I know Americans want all of us in Washington, especially me, to concentrate on the task of building our nation here at home, putting people back to work, educating our kids, growing our middle class. With humility, but with resolve, let us never lose sight of that essential truth. Okay, we're going to do a quick Q&A, and then David has to pick yeah, up yeah, his Zaynan, daughter. Yeah, Carlos. Approach the microphone. Someone, please. Post the mic, and we'll ask a question. <sighs> Ms. Dubois has the first question, and then Aaron. <laughs> Come on up. Uh, make sure you say your first and last name. Hello, David. What's up? My name is Maya DuBose. Um, <coughs> Uh, so I've worked on set a few times before, and so I understand how important it is to make sure I'm making the right connections. My question to you is, after having some time apart from working on set and still having, you know, the numbers and knowing the names of certain people and emails and things like that, how do you suggest that I push myself or, you know, try to build that relationship again with other people? Just hit them up. Just be like, hey, what's up? What you been up to? Yeah. How's set life? You working on anything? Mm -hmm. You want to go have coffee? Mm -hmm. Let's go catch this movie. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So everybody is like with Cornell. I was supposed to meet with Cornell this week, and I hit him up last week. I was like, Yo, Cornell, how's it going? You know, let's go hang out. You know, catch him. He loves going to museums. That's his thing. He, if he's off, you you'll catch him at a museum all day. And I was like, Yo, let's go catch a museum. And I was like, All right, cool. And then I was like, Hey, look, I just got hit up for work. I can't make it. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how you you do. I still um. There's this woman by the name of Jan Burgess who, who pretty much saved my career in Local 600. And she, me and her are like best friends now. We just hit each other all the time. She tells me, she, she's like, oh, I don't care about this strike. Her husband's an engineer and took a, a job down in Florida and she was vacationing for seven months. So oh. she didn't care, you know what I mean? So okay. you, know, you just, just hit them up. That's it. Don't be shy. If, if, if you're going to be shy, this is, not gonna, this is not the industry for you. Okay. You and you're I mean? not shy. No, I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> Great question. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Alexander, come on. Come on up. Uh, Alexander is a, another talented filmmaker. Uh, came to us from Real Works in New York. Mm. I'm sure he has a question for you. Nice shirt. Yeah. Appreciate you. Thank you. It's an old one. First, last name. Uh, my name is Alexander Ortiz. Um... Really blindsided. I, 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 I just. <laughs> what advice can you give someone like Alexander, who's well, a writer? What do you want to do? He's an actor. He's a director. What do you want to do? I want to write and direct. All right, you want to write and direct? Yeah. So I suggest start figuring out who wants to be a cinematographer, who mm -hmm. wants to be an actor in your class. I mean, I'm sure there's act, you know, there's actors that want to write and writers that want to act. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Start figuring that out, and I. A network, you could start here. I'm sure. Um, Maya. We, we, no, not my. I'm sorry, behind. Aaron. Aaron, he just told me he wants to be a cinematographer. So now, you're like, hey, I got this script. I got this short. <laughs> oh, they, oh he's, he's claimed. I'm sorry. I yell, I'm sorry if I yelled. That's all right. Oh, yeah. So, you know, or be like, hey, when you're done with my project, if this is something you want to work on later. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Or he'd be like, hey, do you know another cinematographer that maybe want to shoot this? You yeah. know, someone that wants to, someone that's learning. Because right now, you guys are learning your craft. Mm -hmm. And the way you learn your craft is by working with each other. That's right. Yeah. So yeah. it's important to work with your crew. I mean, well, here's the thing. I, no question, but I'm going to just talk to you. You, you transferred to Hunter. Right? No, I graduated from here, and then 
I got into Hunter and then finished the rest there. Right. So that's 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 my plan too. I I I, right. I got the I got accepted to Hunter and I'm gonna try to transfer this next semester. Okay. Um, how, how was that process like? From, All right. So from jumping from those two. So I'm gonna get your your info later and I'll tell you exactly what process to go through that I didn't know about because there's sometimes of a wait list to get into film production class. Mm -hmm. I got super lucky that I got into my first year. Usually there's a one year wait, so then you're taking like bullshit classes just mm -hmm. to get by, but you want film production one and we'll get, I'll give you all the info and I'll, who you I'll have to get to. I'll give your information. David, I have to hit you on this because he's gonna go through this at Hunter. Mm -hmm. Tell him what happened your senior year with the broken camera. He should hear it, how it happened. Oh, I'll tell yeah. that story later. You want that? Okay, because yeah. he's got a great story to <laughs> tell right. you about equipment. Almost killed right. someone. Yeah. Round of applause. Okay. Brian, last question. I will send you um, Alexander. Alexander, can I, I'm giving your cell too, okay? Okay. This is Brian, he's gonna, um, Brian comes to us with us. This is his second degree he's going for. All right. Go ahead, Brian, uh, first last name. So hi, my name is Brian Tiello. What's up, Brian? What's up, Ivor, how are you doing? Um, my question is, is that since you're a cinematographer and you started here, um, I, I'm, a, I'm not a cinematographer. Well, since you work, okay. Since you're aspiring to be a cinematographer okay. in local 600, mm. for me as a person who as well is also inspiring to be a cinematographer, what's one advice that you can give out to somebody? I know that you met Quintel Jones, if I'm correct. Quintel, yeah. Yeah. So I met him too. And his advice to me was to continuously shoot everything that you do. What's something you can yeah. build off of that as well? Or is it the same advice? Learn lighting tricks. Uh, go online like now I'm starting to like I'm getting I'm going like deep in the YouTube zone where like it's this guy talking about how Cooper like every single segment of like how Cooper did Full Metal Jacket like how he picked out the palm trees like Cooper could be behind the guy shooting he'd be like no that's palm tree 57 I want palm tree 38 there and then put that like that's how precise he was like these YouTube so go on YouTube uh, pick you know pick up uh, cinematography books that's how you're gonna learn more about lighting. Like Cornell goes to museums to get inspired by the lighting and the paintings. And he, and he sits there and he looks and he tries to figure out, okay, the painter's making the light come in this way. So how can I do that with actual light? You know, these guys are doing it with paint, you know. So just, just yeah, I forgot the word he used, but just like engulf yourself and just go in. Like if you wanna be a cinematographer, learn as much about lighting, learn as much as about the lights that you're gonna use you know, that way when you dictate to the, you know, the electrician and the gaffer, like, look, this is what I want, they know what you're talking about. Even though all that's predetermined, you know what I mean? But, you know, look, go on YouTube. I mean, I wish I had YouTube when, when I was here. Oh my God. YouTube is just, there's so much, you could just, I mean, I'm sure you guys all know, you could just take a deep dive and just be there for two hours looking at And I just want to share this with you. David has a, has a love for the Criterion Collection. He loves movies and he watches a lot of movies and he buys DVDs. He's telling me sometimes, oh, Jeff, look, there's a half-price sale, for like a flash sale, yeah. and he's telling me what DVDs he's buying. Don't ever give up your love for, for cinema. And he got out of his comfort zone right away. He watches everything, Italian films, French films, experimental I didn't, films. I didn't like Taxi Driver. Remember I didn't like Taxi Driver at first? And then, you, and then, and then, then, then I, you made me understand why it was important. There's certain key films. They're like, they're like films, you, if you go for an interview for a cinematographer, you have to have a reference point for certain directors. And you will pick that up as you continue to study film. With that, a round of applause for David Diaz. I'm going to ask Thanks, everybody guys. to come up. Because David has to pick up his daughter. We want to get a group shot, so we're wired. Stay here. Oh, yeah, Can yeah, everyone yeah. come up behind David and I? Almost. Jamal, could you take the photo? Thanks. And then we're going we're gonna to let you go. We're gonna, you got to come up for two minutes. Yeah. Thanks, Jamal. Forgot how hot these lights are. Um, Anthony, Ingvar, Shiloh, come on in. Thanks. And you know what? Well, we'll get